Over the last few years, I've been able to grow my little YouTube channel that I just started as a hobby because I love to talk about movies way too much into a new full-time career. Well, today I'm gonna give you my 10 best tips for growing a nerdy channel. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies way too much and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about how I was able to grow my channel enough that I can talk about movies way too much for a living. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. If you have a YouTube channel where you do kind of nerdy stuff, let me know your best tips for what you found works for helping you grow your channel. Also, I've recently put together a couple of extended resources beyond just these videos to kind of help people do YouTube better. One of them is kind of a little ebook that I did on my how I put videos together. And then the other one is a list of 75 ideas for movie channel ideas while we're in this quarantine and there's no new movies coming out. The links for that are down below in the description and let's get started. Tip number one, create great content. Now I know this doesn't feel like a very satisfying tip. I know it's not the sexiest of suggestions to say, hey, create great content. But at the end of the day, the best thing you can do to help yourself grow is make content that adds value to other people. And that doesn't happen just because you put content out there, not just because you put time into it, but because you made something unique that adds value to other people. And so just grow as much as you can as someone that's putting ideas out there, as an editor, as someone that understands YouTube, and we'll elaborate on all of that later on in this video, but you have to make great content. And you need to prepare for luck. YouTube's kind of a random thing where you never know when it's gonna do you favors, and so when you make make great videos that are optimized for how YouTube works, you're prepared for when you get lucky. And when those moments happen, you want to be have everything set up to best optimize those moments. Tip number two, discover what makes you unique. In my previous video I made called 10 Tips for Starting a Movie Channel, one of the things I said in there is when you're starting, copy people. Because trying to figure out how to edit videos, be good on camera, come up with ideas, that's a lot of different things to try and figure out. So when you're starting out, I think it's okay to look at what I'm doing and Jeremy Johns and Chris Stuckman, kind of copy us a little bit. But if you want to grow, you have to figure out what makes you unique and your own personal style. Style. It's okay to be a cover band at the beginning, but you got to write your own songs eventually if you want to grow. So there's three things you need to think about. First off, what are you passionate about? What's distinctly, uniquely something that's a passion for you? Second, what are you good at? What is a thing? Are you funny? Are you kind of someone that loves facts and going into details? Figure out that thing that makes you unique. And then third, what do people care about <laughs> that you create. And these are kind of three different things. And when you overlap the three of them, what you actually love creating, what you're good at creating, and what people are responding well to, you find your sweet spot right there in the middle. Like, I'm just kind of into big franchises and stuff like that. I don't mind watching a bad movie in a franchise and re-watching movies and stuff like that to do my rankings. I don't mind doing all that stuff. Um, and therefore, being the ranking guy talking about big mainstream films, I can do that pretty well because I'm not driven bad by watching bad Transformers movies every time a new Transformers movie comes out. So you have to figure out what that, what that is for you, that you're passionate about it, you're good at it, and other people respond to it. Then you find your sweet spot right there in the middle. Next up, work hard, hustle, and be patient. Here's the reality. There's a lot of people out there that want to be successful with a nerdy channel, a movie channel, a gaming channel. There's an enormous amount of competition and a limited number of viewers out there. And so if you want to have the results, if you want to have serious results, you have to treat it seriously. If you want the results of a job, you have to treat it like a job. That means working hard, not just the grind of creating videos, but the grind of getting better and always looking to improve. Likewise, the hustle side to it. When I say hustle, I'm talking about building connections to other people and gaining access to things. Like, I, I'm able to go to most press screenings here in Austin, not right now because there aren't any, but 
I'm on almost all the press lists and that's not because I just had connections before I started. It's not like I applied in one place and got on all the lists. No, I went to press screenings, wait in these three hour lines and then I would talk to the person running it and I would try and meet people and I would send emails and I would send 20 emails and 19 of them would get ignored and then I'd grow my channel a little bit more and I'd send out 20 more emails and only 15 of them would get ignored and every time I'd get added, I'd try and leverage that. It was just a lot of hustle but then it takes time. You have to be patient. Sometimes I have people ask me like, hey, when did you start? Well, technically I put up my first movie website in the late 90s. It was 17, 18 years before I started my YouTube channel. I had little things I'd been working on. And so by the time I started this, I'd been editing video for over 10 years and dabbling in movie commentary in little ways for over 15 years. And then once I started my channel, it took me a year before it became profitable. It took me like, three years before I got onto Rotten Tomatoes. And I had people message me like, oh, how do you get on Rotten Tomatoes? I think that'd be really good for me. How can I get on there quicker? You gotta be patient. You gotta put in the hard work and realize that if you're only willing to do this for three months and if you don't make it, then you're gonna throw in the towel. You, you probably should, you're not gonna make it because it takes a really long time to grow an audience uh, in today's marketplace with so many people out there. And it, it's always taken hard work, hustle, and patience. Number four, learn everything you can. If you want to succeed at this, you have to have better insight, more knowledge of how YouTube works. Think better about all of this stuff. Be more entertaining than other people. And to do that, you just need to keep learning. I'll tell you exactly some of the stuff that I have gone through. First off, within my first, first 30 days of starting, Sean Chandler talks about, I went through 30 days to a better YouTube channel. There's a link to that down below in the description, and I've gone through it four more times since then. It's, it's a course, it's 30 lessons, and it basically shaped all the way I think about how YouTube works. I highly recommend it. I know the guy that created it now. I've done a bunch of the courses that he's done and it's very much influenced how I think about YouTube in general. The link is down below in the description. Second course I went through was uh, Sean Canals Think Media's course, Video Ranking Academy. And it's a course that just dives into how to create a video that does well on YouTube and thinking through titles, concept, everything to how to get it to rank well and then monetize that afterwards. And so, whereas the course 30 Days to a Better YouTube Channel thinks about your channel as a whole, Video Ranking Academy thinks about videos in particular. Once again, link is down below in the description. Um, this is another person, I've met him, I've taken a whole bunch of his courses and watched a ton of his videos on YouTube. Third one I did was to help me grow as a movie critic, I did masterclass.com. And basically it's a website that does courses and they've got Martin Scorsese, they got Natalie Portman, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, David Mamet, Ron Howard, and uh, a bunch of other people, actors, screenwriters, directors. And so I just basically signed up for it to learn from actors, directors, and screenwriters how they talk about their craft so I can think about movies better. So going through it, went through Aaron Sorkin's course and he's talking about story, dialogue, scene construction, and that shaped the language of that I use inside of my rankings and my reviews. So it's all about learning and learning, trying to be better at what I'm trying to do. And just so you know, I'm working on my own kind of YouTube course on how I grew my YouTube channel and everything. That's something I'm working on in the background and I hope to have that out in a month or two. Just so you know, that's something that's coming. Tip number five, respond to all comments and learn from your comment section. YouTube is a social media site and so for as long as possible, you need to respond to as many comments as is possible. Like for me now, I simply can't because the volume is too large, but I'm very active on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So I'm very present interacting with fans, having conversations and listening as much as I can, even though there's just too many comments for me to respond to all of them on my main YouTube channel. But when you're starting out, when you're first starting to grow, respond Respond to all of them. Build a one-on-one -on -one connection. Know that you're paying attention. It's not just a one-way conversation. Design your videos to get a reaction from people and then converse with them in the comment section. Here's a pro tip. Respond to comments with a question so it turns a comment into a conversation, a back and forth where someone gets used to knowing you and knowing you care what they have to say. I want to say this, the, the video ideas that I've had that have transformed my channel 
came from the comment section. The two biggest videos on my channel came from someone commenting, say, hey man, why don't you rank all the Marvel villains? You know what, that's a good idea right there. I did that and that decision literally changed the trajectory of my life. That's the power of paying attention to good ideas, being a little bit in the know with the conversations that are happening. For the rest of these, I'm gonna get a little bit more into strategies specifically for growing, probably the stuff you were looking for when you clicked on this video. The key principle you need to understand about YouTube is the primary currency of YouTube is watch time. Most people pay attention to subscribers and views. Those are good. Watch time is really the fuel for YouTube and you want to get people to watch your videos for longer and watch more of them in a row, not just one video. That's the principle that's gonna drive the rest of these um, tips that I'm gonna give you. Next up, be smart with your playlists. Most people treat playlists like drunk drawers. They just throw a bunch of stuff kind of in the same ballpark into this one thing. They never clean it out and so then there's dozens and dozens of videos in a playlist and someone goes to it and they don't know what's in there so it looks like a junk drawer. You wanna treat playlists a little bit more like your utensil drawer, silverware drawer, where you open it, there's a clear tray in it, all the forks are in one place, all the knives in another place, so it's easy to find exactly what you're looking for and you know what you're looking at. Have playlists that are smaller and for more specific things. And here's why. When you're doing a video, what you want to do is extend someone's view session. If they like your one video, you want to point them to another video. And so you do that by pointing them to a playlist with more content that they'll probably like that's catered to that specific video. More videos specifically like it. So like five videos, not 100 videos of varying qualities. No, the five videos that the people that watched this video might like are in this one right there. And so what you'll notice is like playlists don't tend to have like crazy numbers of views, but they have views from the right people. The people that watch videos in a playlist watch like three, four in a row. If you spend any time on YouTube, if you go to a channel and watch three, four videos in a row, what does YouTube do? Recommend their videos to you all week long. That person starts chasing you around and you want to create a scenario where your videos are chasing people around because they watched a few of them. Then YouTube does its magic and they look at their view history and your archive videos overlaps the two and they go, they'll probably like this one. They'll probably like this one because they're trying to get more watch time and they know that this person watched multiple videos in a row on your channel. That's the power of smart playlists that are designed for specific viewers rather than junk drawers with just a bunch of of junk in there. Number seven, strategic collaborations. Not random collaborations, not just having some people on or trying to get onto places, but think strategically, who can you partner with to build a community? Honestly, I think when you're starting out, it's best to carve out your own little corner of YouTube. Whenever I started, I wasn't trying to collaborate with people 10 times my size or 100 times my size. I tried to meet all the people around my size, did a lot of videos with them. I did this thing called Masters of Movie Trivia where we did our own little trivia competition and we cut out our own little corner of YouTube where People knew all of our channels all at the same time and so we shared an audience. And here we are three, four years later and all the people that I met early on, if they're still creating, I'm still friends with all of those people. And that's probably your best strategy to get momentum right now is that you have to cut out a space with a group of people. And if you wanna start collaborating up, you have to think, you want access to their time and their audience and so you have to think about what can you do to benefit them? What What is the reason that they should collaborate with you? Not in this looking down sense, but they probably have a lot of opportunities on their table. So think, how can I help this person? How can I benefit them? Let them talk about something they wouldn't normally talk about rather than just try and use them for their audience. People can sense when you're doing things like that. And if you want, as a pro tip, if you wanna collaborate way up, don't message someone and be like, hey man, can you do your type of content on my channel? Hey man, can I be on your channel? That's an awkward thing to do. Instead, ask to interview them on your channel. People like to be interviewed, and it kind of makes it a little clear there's a difference between the sizes if you're like, 
I would like to interview you. It's respecting the fact that they have an audience and you're wanting to kind of learn from it a little bit as opposed to approaching them as a peer when there probably is a pretty big gap between the two of you. Real quick, before I give you my final three, remember I've got two resources I've put out recently. They're both totally free. You can find the links to them down below in the description. One is an ebook that I put out about a month ago called 30 Questions to a Great Nerdy Video. And it basically walks you through the process that I think through my videos from the concept to the shoot, to the editing, to posting, and then to sharing it. 30 questions to think through all of that. It's only about 5,000 words, so it's not like a full book. It's just like a mini booklet, but a lot of questions to help you think a little bit better. The other one is a resource I just put out today with this video with 75 video ideas for while we're in quarantine. I just thought through like all the different directions that you can talk about movies to kind of help you brainstorm what to do right now when we don't have new movies to talk about to spark the discussions. Here's 75 prompts for video ideas that you could come up with a lot more than 75 ideas from this list. Both are free down below in the description. Number eight, create templates. When I figured this out, it was a game changer for my video creation. A lot of people kind of start from scratch with every video that they do. And so then they're just writing free form with their reviews. They go into editing in their video editing software and there's just nothing in there. They're starting with a blank slate every single time. That just means you have to repeat work. So for me, I created a template for how I do my movie reviews and having a template for how I think about them as I'm watching them makes it easier for me to categorize everything, to write my notes to do a review so I don't have to write a full transcript anymore because I have this template that I always use. Having the template means in my video editing software, everything's already preloaded. I just open up template movie review and then I save it as a copy for that, whatever that movie is, and then when I edit, shoot my videos, everything just goes in there nice, quick, easy. It doesn't take a lot of time because it's previously created. Even when I do in my rankings, I have files in Photoshop where I just drop all the posters and then they appear in Photoshop. Everything's already there in place. Because I have templates for all of this, it just shaves off so much time for editing. Or like I can pre-edit my videos the night before when I'm writing them. I just get all my clips and I drop them in there and I haven't even filmed it yet. And so when it comes time to editing it, maybe the next day, I edit in like 20 minutes because it's nice, clean, and cut the way that it's all done. So have templates for how you do your videos because it makes it easier to write them, makes it easier to film them, it makes it easier to edit them, and it saves time on everything. Next to last on here, you need to study your analytics. YouTube is owned by Google, and Google is just as creepy as you think they are. They track absolutely everything about which people interact with your videos and how they do all of it, and all of that is available to you on YouTube, in YouTube Studio, in the analytics section, it gives you so much information that is incredibly useful for making videos that people actually want. And when you start diving into it, it's actually very like, sobering and kind of, you know, like feel like your stomach drop a little bit as you look at some of these numbers and you go, oh, my numbers aren't as good as I think they are. So a few numbers you need to look at. First one is audience retention. This one is a game changer for you. When you start studying audience retention, you start realizing what a click really means. And a click sometimes means that someone clicked on it and they left in 10 seconds or the majority of people left in 10 seconds. Whereas some videos you realize that there's like a 60% audience retention. That means people actually liked that video once they clicked on it. And they'll put a graph on YouTube in the analytics where they will show you your chart of the whole timeline of the video and they will show you exactly what the audience retention is for every single second of the video. Which means you can see exactly when people left. That is incredibly helpful for discovering what you're bad at and discovering what isn't working. When I changed, uh, when I started studying this stuff, made a change to the template of how I did my videos, my audience retention percentage jumped up 15% within a matter of like two weeks because I figured out certain things I were doing just absolutely weren't working so people would just click away at the end of my videos and they weren't seeing a bunch of the stuff that I was doing so I wasn't getting certain amounts of watch time. A couple other ones you need to study on here. You can click and find out for every video how many subs you gained and how many subs you lost for that video. So sometimes you might think, oh man, this video was a big hit, it got a ton of views, but you realize you didn't actually gain any subs from it. And you can figure out when you talk about other subjects, maybe it didn't get as many views, but the percentage of subs gained from it is pretty crazy. Likewise, it'll tell you which videos made you lose subs. Like I did a little experiment 
a couple weeks back where I did a bunch of quick reviews of smaller films and I posted like three, four or three videos over I posted five videos over two days. So three videos one day, two videos the next day. And I went in the numbers to see how did this experiment work? I knew views would be low if I did this, but what would that look like with my numbers? And I realized on those little reviews that I do, the quick reviews, I lost like five subs. So I put work into it. I got some views, but the end result was that I had fewer subs because of it, because it annoyed people more so than added value to them. So little things you can learn from that. Certain subjects will drive people away and certain people subjects will draw people in. And finally, study your hits and your flops. You need to know what works on your channel, what your audience is responding to. Back to what I said before about passion, skill, and what are people actually responding to. When you start diving into that, that's when you start to really discover what to double down on and what you need to cut. Like for me, what I've realized from doing this and making it a monthly pattern for my channel, retro reviews have always done poorly on my channel. Other than when I do a build-up series to a major on-brand franchise, Marvel, DC, Star Wars. Besides those, like when I did the Rambo movies, very few views lost subs on the videos. It was a passion project. It was something I had fun with, but it wasn't something that my audience responded to. And if you just want your channel to be a passion project, just something you enjoy doing, maybe you can ignore that. But if you want your channel to grow, and that's what this video is about, if you want your channel to grow, you need to really pay attention to which videos connect with your audience and which ones don't. So like right now during quarantine, while there aren't new movies coming out, I decided I'm gonna put out a Marvel video every single week because what I've seen is that my audience loves Marvel videos. That's what most of them subscribe because of one of my Marvel rankings. Therefore, if I put one of those out every week, I'm every week giving my audience something that they specifically want and enjoy. And I enjoy talking about that subject. So I don't mind doing that, even if sometimes they can be a little bit repetitive. They can touch on some familiar ground, but my audience enjoys that for the most part. And so I'm giving them more of what they like paying attention to what flops and what's a hit. And sometimes I'll choose actively to put stuff out that I know won't be a hit on my channel, but I'm doing it because I just want to do that for me. I'm not doing it to grow my channel. I'm very aware of what does and does not work. That's what you really have to do if you want your channel to grow. If you're looking for more ideas of how to improve on YouTube, remember I have those two resources down below in the description. They're totally free. One is an ebook with 30 questions to a great nerdy video that dives into all this stuff a little bit more. The other one is 75 movie video ideas. For if you have a movie channel, here's 75 prompts to help you come up with some ideas during a little bit of a tough time. Thank you guys so much for watching and keep talking movies and YouTube too much.